So despite this needing of clarity, it's pretty much muddy the waters of this certain bug boy. Hey folks, Masako X here. Now, this story is something of a very wholesome one in the long run, and that's saying something with the typical fare that you usually see here. With this particular tale, we are seeing the likes of one of the most infamous villains of the series become a good person. Well, technically, there is some caveat attached to that. This isn't the same perfect cell that we are used to, but instead, the gestating one from the chamber that Trunks and Krillin discovered. The key difference being here is that instead of blowing that one away, Bulma decided to bring this creature to term and let it live out its life, which it did so, and gave out plenty of hugs during this time. As a result, our good boy here, whom Bulma dubbed Fungly as Android 21, became a very hot button topic, but ultimately a valuable member of the Dragon Team, given his abilities. In the last part, however, he had undertaken quite the unusual and rather dire means to find solace with himself. Aping the days of King Piccolo and Kami, he elected to split his evil sense of self from his own nature, despite many protestations from Piccolo and the like. Him remembering the experience from the Kami contingent of his being. Despite this warning though, 21 just went and did it anyway, and soon realised that maybe splitting his component parts it might affect his own resolve too in that sometimes. It would affect his own resolve too in that sometimes, perhaps, having some evil is best kept around to temper yourself and for you to keep it from harming others. As a result, we saw 21 devolve back to his semi-perfect form, something he actually never experienced the first time Randy transformed because he took 17 and 18 at the same time, and saw himself in his first imperfect form only this time it was a very different beast, who saw no interest in fusing back together with him anymore. Oh dear, the bug cat is out of the bug bag here. Has Android 21 let loose an evil version of himself? Or is there more to this? So, as you can probably tell from this summary of events, splitting from his more atavistic side was not the best of ideas. Even though what Piccolo had told him was grave and logical in the extreme beforehand, he just gone ahead after that, and despite the stupid risk, and actually for the sake of his own selfish desire, to be free from pain and anger and malevolency. Or so he thought. Oh, how naive he was. And now, this other guy was on his way to take Mitre and Condra. Who knows what he will do to them? He felt furious with himself for being so pig-headed. And then he felt as if he wanted to punch something. And don't you know it? A nearby street lamp got broken as the lamp sparked and crashed its way to the ground in a mound of very twisted metal. This caught the attention of one of his friends, who came over to give him some soothing words. Ah, uh, buddy? Are you alright? Krillin seemed shocked at this sudden showcase of negative emotions exploding, which was what his friend had been trying to purge from himself, so seeing this was rather… weird. For a second, Semi-Perfect 21 saw not comforting company before him, but a rather irksome and anger-inducing pest. He wanted to also punch this small annoyance for asking such a stupid question. But after a moment, he then began to realise that this was his friend Krillin talking, coming to tend to him, instead of deliberately getting on his nerves. He wasn't doing that. Come on, 21. It's Krillin. Everyone's friend. Krillin took 21 with him, and together they regrouped with some of the Dragon Team to figure out a plan as to what to do with their new homegrown enemy it seemed. For some, it felt like they were having a strange case of deja vu, fighting another version of imperfect cell. Piccolo was feeling this especially. 21 stood before them and bowed his head. Uh, I'm sorry everyone. This was my fault. I shouldn't have been so naive. I'm just worried about the kids. Mostly angry at myself. And now, Thanks to this reckless endeavour, I've lost control of my malicious thoughts. This doesn't happen to me normally. I thought I'd win past this. Clearly not. 21 was having a pity party in the highest, which caused 18 to roll her eyes. Bored of hearing her siblings bleating and wallowing in self-pity, she took charge and snapped 21 out of his sombre stupor. If you're quite done with taking your frustration out on innocent streetlights, 
We need to find your children. Dwelling over your mistake over and over isn't going to get them back. 21 looked to his sister and nodded. You're right. I apologize, sister. You are a wise lady. 18 brushed her hair back in smugness. Oh, I know. And as such, the group started to look for Mitre and Condra, covering as much land as they physically could. Now, the problem was, this search and rescue effort, was that his other half could hide his energy very well. It was something that Imperfect Cell was really good at. And he might have forced the kids to do the same thing, or else risk being killed themselves there and then, with no chance to be freed or bartered for. The dragon team then started to patrol the skies, divided into two pairs to cover more area. Krillin and 18 went one way, and Piccolo and 21 went the other. As they flew for miles, 21 kept repeating to himself the same things. If he hurts them, if he tries to absorb them, 21 would never, ever be able to. As 21 was stewing, repeating this mantra, Piccolo glanced at the pained expression on the bug man's face and knew exactly what he was thinking about. You can't kill him, you know. Well, not without destroying yourself in the process. Remember, the monster is part you. It's like it used to be with me and Kami. Even if you want to, destroying it would destroy you too. That's how the splitting thing works. You are one being. One can't live without the other. 21 didn't need to be reminded of this. He had been warned about this. He realized this. He knew this. But he paid it no mind anyway. Desperate to be rid of these bad thoughts in his head, he just wanted rid of them. But now, he was regretting this over-eagerness and impatience. How could I have been so foolish? I should have never let that thing out! I should have been stronger and kept him inside! Piccolo tilted his head slightly. You know, as he himself pointed out, you didn't make this decision alone. You both did. He wanted out too. So... So I only went and helped him. He played me. No, none of that. You've beaten yourself up enough for one lifetime. I just want to remind you that I used to be the evil half. And he flew ahead of him. Semi-Perfect was getting even more frustrated. He didn't mean to offend Piccolo by being so self-deprecating. He just needed to get his perfection back and then this whole thing would be over. They were looking for many hours, and 21 was ready to ask Bulma for the Dragon Balls to help make their search easier, perhaps. But no matter. Finally, they were able to spot them. At 21's own house. Seriously? Of all the places they could have been, they were right there? This is a weird thing. But it didn't matter. 21 confirmed his kids were there. Condra was hiding behind the chimney. Semi-perfect then rushed toward him. Don't worry, Condra! Daddy's here to protect you! Dad? You look different again. Shoot, does that mean that I lost hide and seek? Look, what? Where's the other me? Other you? Dad, what do you mean? 18 flew closer. Don't worry about that, sweetie. When was the last time you saw Daddy? Before that. Uh, he was counting to ten. Guess he's probably looking for Mida. He was playing with you? Krillin seemed a little surprised. Yeah? What's going on? Should we be worried, Uncle Krillin? No, not at all. Just come with us. We need to go find Mitre. 18 looked at Semi Perfect for a moment. Oh, I know all our hiding spots. Let me show you. And after 15 minutes or so, they indeed found Mitre and Imperfect 21. They were talking, and the little Cell Junior wasn't scared. What? Imperfect smiled wickedly. Oh, look who it is. My evil half. Evil half? How oh, dare. Mitre, come to Daddy this instant. But Mitre hesitated. Mitre? Mitre, come here. Imperfect 21 smiled menacingly. I told our daughter about the fishing thing. But I told her everything from my point of view. And you know how smart your little girl is. Semi-Perfect looked furious. So you lied to her and tried to manipulate her! 21 laughed. <laughs> of course you would say that. Or maybe you are too sure that you are the good half. That was enough from Semi-Perfect's point of view, as he powered up and charged upon Imperfect in rage. But despite their forms seeming like different stages of the original cell, it turned out that actually 
their power was pretty equal. It was only really a costume difference, ultimately. And both of them had been longing for this fight, making their friends and family watch on in terror. Were they going to destroy everything around them just for a brawl? <sighs> They're both out of control! <sighs> I shouldn't have taught them that fishing thing. I'm not so sure, said 18. I recall Krillin mentioning that you had an urge to punch Kami once or twice. 18 was actually seeming to be the only person calm during all of this. Piccolo glared at the droid. Your point being? I think we should not interfere. Will Papa be okay, Aunt 18? 18 patted Mitra on the head. He will. Will you be okay? Yeah, yeah. This other dad was kind of funny. Not as scary as he seemed at first. But now I don't know what to think. Meanwhile, the two cells were duking it out, using more and more techniques. You know, for someone that calls himself the good half, you're getting rather angry and possessive. They're my children as well. That you cannot deny. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Semi-Perfect started to punch his other half repeatedly. Oh, you are so easy to set off. That's rather strange. I should be like that. Did you honestly think I would hurt our own family? Do you really have honestly so little faith in me that you feel that you need to always be in control? Imperfect spat blood as he said this. What? I was in control! I just got rid of- No. We both were. We both made the decision about Deborah. We both made the decision about Jiren. And we both decided to split. You are not in total control. I am not some mystical nonsense or figment of your imagination. A monster in the back of your head. No, I am you. I'm our cleverness, our coolness, and yes, at times, a hunter. But unlike you, I can keep it to myself. I can contain these feelings for the betterment of my own survival. But you? No. These bursts of anger we sometimes have are overconfidence. No, those come from you. You are the weak link. How dare you? Semi-Perfect 21 roared in fury and started to unload all of this frustration on Imperfect, who stopped defending, taking it. After a while, he realized what he was doing. Imperfect was letting him beat him up. He looked at his friends and family who were getting very scared. Was Imperfect right all along? I am also a survival instinct incarnate. But no matter which one of us will die, we will both die. Imperfect was in a pretty rough shape, but still he was laughing. <laughs> I just wanted to have a moment of being me, you know, free from the shackles of your overblown ego. Semi-Perfect sat on the ground, next to the place where he had literally been pounding Imperfect into the ground. So, we're both awful. Maybe it would be better for everyone if we were to just- Oh, shut up with that self-loathing nonsense! I've heard enough of that. I had hoped that, once we had separated actually, we could talk it out. But you couldn't even give me that. We're driving each other mad. Hey, nobody's perfect. Imperfect looked at his other half. There was a moment of silence, but then they both started to laugh. The laugh lasted for so long, it actually made everyone feel rather uncomfortable. So what? You want to steer this time? Semi-perfect looked at Imperfect. If we fuse correctly, maybe we can get a better understanding of one another. Well, it doesn't work like this with Namekians, but we're not Namekian. Imperfect nodded. You know, I can't say that it was nice to meet you, but it was enlightening. Likewise. And as such, they both put hands on their chests and started to fuse, similar to how Namekian fusion works. After the blinding flash of light, Perfect 21 was whole again. But this time he seemed to be rather calmer. He walked up to his family. Sorry it took so long. You all right, sports? Yeah. Are you fine, Papa? Never felt better. Now, 
Were we playing hide and seek? You're not hiding. Mitre and Contra looked at each other reluctantly and then flew off, playfully trying to find a spot. When we're done here, I'm going to go and fix that lamppost. I'm very sorry about that. I hope you do. But how are you really? 18 gazed at 21. Well, like I said, never heard better. You know, sometimes punching yourself in the face can work miracles. Piccolo looked away, but laughed. <laughs> I started to think I lost a good opportunity. So, what's in your mind right now? Quinlan still looked a bit unsure. Oh, I'm going to train my progeny. And then we will conquer this worthless planet. Ha 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 ha! What? I got you! You believed me for a second, buddy, didn't you? No! Oh, of course not! But don't do that again. You're way too good of an actor. And the group laughed. It was a tiring but rather exciting day. Meanwhile, two aliens had found a Saiyan castaway and his all-powerful son on a remote planet called Vampa. Oh boy. This is going to be interesting, and that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now. So what do you folks think? What might the likes of Broly bring to the table when it comes to the likes of Perfect 21? Might his newly minted brain be able to bring clarity to this troubled soul as well? Leave a comment below, and let's get this discussion going. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later!